My, my, my. You didn't took me somewhere else. Look, I, I just want to say this before we get started. Every problem you have is because your relationship with God is broken. Hey, man, I'm going to say that one more time. Every problem that we have is because we are out of alignment with Christ. Listen to me very closely. I, I, oftentimes when you hear that song, you hear it at a funeral or you hear it when somebody, you know, is distressed. And I'm telling y'all, the best relationships are not the relationships when people come to you when they need something. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Listen to me. The best relationships is when folks just calling you just to call you. And can I be honest with you? When somebody is just talking to you and y'all just have a great relationship, whatever they need, that's just a byproduct of a good relationship. Uh, y'all missed what I just said. I'm going to say it one more time. When, when, when you are in right relationship with other humans, when you're in right relationship with God, when you begin to ask people who have resources that you are in relationship with in love, they don't have a problem releasing those. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. And so for many of us, what unfortunately, this is a weekend experience. This is something that we do on the weekend. Amen. When in actuality, this is something we should be doing every day. Hallelujah. And this is why I'm saying that. Because there is an energy and a power that you get from coming into the presence of God. But we wait until the, yeah, we wait until somebody else open the doors. And then, and then here's what we do. And I'm getting into my sermon, but here's what we do. We, we do it when we feel like doing it. And listen to me very closely. I'm, I'm, I'm not promoting APOC. For those of you who are watching, I promise you I'm not promoting APOC. It's not necessary. I'm promoting Jesus Christ. I, like, I don't, I don't care if you don't never come back to APOC. You need to go somewhere. You need to be talking to God on the, I'm going to say that one more time. I, listen to me very closely. I don't got a monopoly on God. Neither do I want to have one. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm not even the type of pastor where I, I want you to look up to me in a certain way. I promise you I don't. I don't, I don't want that responsibility. But Jesus can handle that responsibility. And I'm telling you, I don't care what you're going through. It is a dangerous place to be going through anything and not going through it with Jesus. And so I, I want to, I, I come, I, I want you to get to a place in your life. I don't care if you come for five minutes. I don't care if you come for 10 minutes. If Look, if it's a healthy relationship, it don't take all that. <laughs> Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. You hadn't been in one. Amen. So that's foreign to you. But I'm going to say it one more time. When you're in a great relationship, it don't even take all that. And so one of the things I want you to pray for is I want you to pray for your relationships because what you don't understand is life is not just life. Life has a lot to who you do it with. Oh, come on, somebody. All right, I'm going to say that one more time. Like a lot of y'all think if you go get a degree, if you go get money, you go get a big house, you start having kids, you got a 401k, you like, you start, you like somebody has tricked you into believing that if you got a bunch of stuff, but I promise you, life has more to do with who you do it with than what you get while you on earth. Amen. And if you do it with the wrong people, I'm telling you, it ain't going to be the same life. <laughs> Amen. Come on. I'm talking. Look, I just want to teach right now. Amen. I want to teach right now. Y your life is not screwed up just because it's screwed up. You got a lot of problems because you're running with people that got a lot of problems. For real. And the conversations ain't nothing but problems. Hallelujah. There ain't nothing wrong with that if that's what you're trying to. But you got to stop saying you're trying to go to another level, but you're still hanging out with people who don't want to go to no level. And so one of the things you want to do is you want to find yourself in the place of people who build a relate? Listen to me, y'all. I want y'all to understand something. We, we're going to get in the word. Amen. I want y'all to understand something. I want y'all to understand that relationships are so deep that when God created the first man, he, he created just one. That's how deep relationships are. Now, you can't sit here and tell me that the same God that created Adam couldn't have had 50 Adams. Like, he couldn't have started with 50 Adams. The reason why the Bible is not meant to read just like so you could be deep and you could be arguing with other Christians about what the truth is. The Bible was actually written to better your life. So watch this very closely. If you study the Bible in the book of Genesis, it was just the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and it was just Adam. Oh, somebody missed that. God said, God, God knew that in order for Adam to have a healthy life, 
that he was just going to have to spend time with him alone before he gave him Eve. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Most of our problems is we ain't, not, we ain't spending enough time with the creator. Somebody has tricked you. Now, I got money, so let me tell you this. Somebody has tricked you and made you think that money, look, I tell people this all the time. If money is what they said it was, I take you and we put on a skit mask and we just go chop. <laughs> I take you right now. If money could heal all your problems, if money could make you happy, if money could give you the fulfillment of joy, I promise you I put a ski mask on with you and run up to one of these banks with you and bust that sucker down and we get all the money we can and then roll in it when we get it. But it, it's not, it can't do that. But I promise you, Jesus can. See, here's the deal. When you start running with Jesus, it, it just makes mathematical sense. If money can only do certain things, it don't make sense to worship it. But if Jesus, with the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, if they have the power to be everywhere and know everything and know the past and the future and can be present with you and your mama at the same time and your kids, you probably would want to go with the resource that can actually be a resource and not be with the resource that's a fake resource. It would only make sense. Wow, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Let's get in the word. I'm telling you very closely before you leave here, I'm trying to tell you that your life has more to do with who you running with, who you hanging out with, than it has to do with anything else. Hey Amen. Praise God. I ain't mad at nobody. My wife, like you ain't speaking. Look, I got one life. It ain't I ain't speaking. I'm moving. I don't got time for that. Like I, you listen to me. Listen to me. Now, I know this going to, for some of y'all, this is, this is a, a un, this is a difficult conversation I have with your loved ones. Hallelujah. But I want you to start thinking this way. I, want, I don't know what it is about life, but we try to pretend like we're going to live forever. And we teach our loved ones and our babies like we act like they're going to live forever. Come on, listen to me very closely. So we don't like to talk about death. We don't like to deal with death. But the reality is everybody in this room going to die. Listen to me very closely. You're going to die. I don't care how many vegetables you eat. You're not going to make it to 210. There's no vegetable you can eat that's going to take you to 210. There's no weight you can lift. You can go out there and lift all the weights. Bruh, you can go out there and lift all, you push all that iron you want to. It's not about to give you an additional 50 years on your life. Now, you saying don't eat right? Go for it. I'm not telling you not to eat right, but I'm trying to tell you that you're going to die. So if we know we're going to die, then why aren't we living? Listen to me. If you knew your spouse was going to die, you'd treat her differently. Like, I wake up every day knowing, like, yo, for real, Didi could be out of here today. Like, there, are, there are, I've seen more deaths, maybe because it's the internet and they're sharing it with us, but I've seen way more deaths than I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen way more younger people die. There is no guarantee that you're going to live long, and there is no guarantee that if you live long, you're going to have your independence, and I guarantee you if you live long, you're going to lose your youth. So you only have a certain amount of youth in your life. Oh, I, you better hear what I'm telling you. I don't care how long you live. I don't care if you live to be a hundred. You're not going to have a hundred years of youth. And you're certainly not going to have a hundred years of independence. Praise God. So I don't, you know, when folks on death, I'm not mad at them. Like, go ahead and do your funeral, but I'm going to do life today. So we're not talking no death talk. I'm not talking no death talk. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, that's the problem with a lot of you. You running with death. You running with people that talk death and you wondering why you having death. You running with people, all they talk about is problems. All they talking about, I said, listen to me, sweetheart. It's not that I don't know that there's problems. I used to be homeless. I know about problems. I, I really lived in an abandoned building. I know about problems. I'm just old enough now to be not be talking about problems. I was talking about problems when I didn't really know there was a Christ. Now that I know there's Jesus, we're going to go ahead and focus on the solution because he says he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. That earth has no sorrow. That heaven can I heal so why am I focused on a problem when I got a God that can give me a solution oh y'all not hearing what I'm saying you said you, you when we sometimes I think when I preach people thinking like yo he preaching and he saying he don't have no he don't have no challenges he don't have no bro I got the same challenge you have we just we, we we just look at them differently like you you know you got problems and you know you got stuff that you're trying to get out of you know you don't want to go back there again you know you don't want to live like that no more but what you're doing is talking about how you don't want to live like that no more I'm in Christ doing something about I'm not about to live like that no more 
That's, I just want to make sure we, we clear. Like, I live on the same earth you have. I, I, I deal with racism just like you do. I get pulled over sometimes on some dumb stuff. And people treat me a certain type of way. And sometimes they don't pay me what they pay my man. But the difference is, I'm not talking about my life and how bad it is and keep rehearsing it. I'm talking about what is and making sure that in God, we don't experience that. Are oh, you not hearing what I'm saying? You sitting up here running around talking about you, you living from check to check and you keep talking about you living from check to check. And so you're going to keep living from check to check. I'm saying, Didi, we living from check to check, but we got God. God, what are we going to do about it? God, huh? How do we get out of this? God, there's no reason to have a God if I'm going to stay in the same prop. I didn't need God when I was homeless. Oh, you, you missed that. I, you missed that. God, I'm homeless. We need to do something. Not, oh God, I'm homeless. How you got me here? I can't believe I'm here. What's going on? I said, God, I'm homeless. I know this is not your will for me. What are we going to do? I'm just telling y'all for real. We ain't nobody in this room. We all got our challenges. We got our problems. But the way you talk about it, you actually give life to your problems the way you talk about it. And I'm not mad at you. But if you worried and got a spirit of anxiety, you're not about to pull me in that room. I'm not, if you want to be worried, be worried. If you want to have a spirit of anxiety, be that. You want to talk about how broke you are? Talk that talk. But don't invite me to the party. Because I ain't coming. And don't get mad at me because I don't want to (laughs) come. You mad at me because I don't want to come to your lame party. Don't be mad at me. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. So, So I want you to work on your relationships. Praise God. So watch this, y'all. Praise God. So one of my relationships... Amen. Carl text, uh, me and Didi, I believe Tamisha was on a, y'all miss what I just said. Be careful of your relationships. My, my relationships start off sending me Bible scriptures. <laughs> your relationship calling you complaining. I don't need church to complain. I could have stayed in the streets. I don't need God to, I don't need God to live homeless. I was doing that without Christ. So I have a relationship where it starts off with, hey, I was having devotion and I thought I'd share. Thank you. So I thought I'd share with y'all. The scriptures say, don't read it to be deep. Read it to do what it tells you to do. Because if you do what it tells you to do, watch what happens. Now, now listen, we're going to talk today. Listen to me very closely. Again, you got to pray about your relationships because we've gone through school. And one of the things they teach us is a lot of math, science, social studies. But I don't know why we don't have relationship classes. Parents, do me a favor. You got young babies in school, force the teachers to do some relationship stuff. Like they just put us in school together. There is no how to get along with people, you know, uh, 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 how to win friends and influence people. Like there's none of that. There's no mutualism. Watch this. And so I want you all to get to a place where all of your relationships are mutual or they're not real relationships. Amen. Now you can have acquaintances. That's cool. But I'm talking about relationships should be mutual. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I want y'all to know that the church has done a great job of telling you about God, but it doesn't always do a good job about God telling you what he want to do for you. Praise God. Amen. I just, I don't know about y'all, but my best relationships are the ones that are mutual. That's the best ones. The best ones is when we going out to eat, we all fighting who going to pick up the bill, not who running from the bill. <laughs> not the folk that like acting like we didn't just all eat. <laughs> You acting like we just didn't sit down and all eat. We all just ate. Like you walking out without paying. The, are you in? Uh, what a joy it is to be at a relationship in a relationship where we go out to eat. And I'm talking about sometimes we go out and it, we was in Dubai. I know the bill. I know because they was all ordering A5 steak. They just had an A5 spirit on them. Amen. They just all. I'm like, how much is that? It was two fifty, right? I promise y'all in the name of Jesus, we had about three folks that ordered the 250 steak. We had other folks that ordered this, ordered that. We were having a great time. I went to the lady and was like, yo, I'm going to pick up the bill. She says, the bill has already been paid. I said, by who? She said, I ain't going to tell you, but they came and paid hours before y'all even showed up to the restaurant. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm telling you today that your problem is you're not in mutual relationships. You And that's your fault. You, you mad at me because I'm in mutual relationships. You made the choice to be with folks that want to whine and complain and cry all day. That was your choice. Oh, I'm talking to somebody online. You chose to connect with that person. There was something about that person. You chose, and not only did you choose to connect with them, you chose not to hold them accountable for doing what they did. Amen. Praise God. Y'all not hearing me. 
Hey, man, I saw recently, you know, it's been on a lot of little stuff on social media. It was a couple, you know, relationships where it was domestic violence. And so when I read it, I wasn't tripping. I wasn't like judging nobody. I was just like, man, you got the wrong one. Man, bro, you married the wrong chick. You married somebody that let you beat them up. <laughs> Y'all missed what I just said. I'm like, I promise y'all I've been angry before. I promise y'all I felt like choking Didi out. But I promise you, if I'd have tried to choke her out, she'd have choked me out before I choked her out. You not hearing what I'm saying? I'm not a good human. I just married somebody that held me accountable. Say, you ain't going to treat me like that. You ain't going to do me like that. And I ain't mad at you. I'm not telling you you got to stay with me, but if you stay with me, it ain't going down like that. So whatever your little daddy trauma is, you're going to get it fixed if you're going to be with me. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, sir, do you fix the daddy trauma? I need, <laughs> I need to go to a church where they fix. Are oh, you not hearing what I'm saying? I'm not preaching perfection. I'm preaching that I'm around people who will not allow me to be my weakest. I, you need to start hanging with folks that will show you a version of yourself that you didn't even think existed. <laughs> You missed what I said. I'm going to say that again. You need to start hanging with folks that when you finish with them five years later, ten years later, you like, I thought I saw a putty cat. I did. I did see a putty cat. You hanging around folks, they're going to let you complain. They're going to let you whine and cry. They're going to let you dog folk out. They're going to let you leave. I'd be laughing at folks. I said, man, we made it all the way to the finals and you ain't playing? You should have quit when we was in regular season. That ain't even smart. Who your friends? You get a bonus when you win. <laughs> they give you a bonus in playoffs. You get a bonus in the finals. You quit. You got mad in regular season and quit. What kind of friends you got? I don't have the kind of friends that let you quit. Carl said, E, I was just with Carl, his mom, his dad, to me. We were just all sitting around hanging out. I'm talking about we were just all hanging out. It was around Christmas. I'd never forget. It was cold. That's how I know what Christmas. It was cold. We were just sitting around. I was minding my business. Carl said, E. I said, what's up, fam? When are you going to finish that PhD? I said, what? <laughs> Bruh, I, whatever. Keep going. He said, man, Tamisha going to finish before you finish. I was like, now you, now you, you feel me? Now you, you the, now you, the, you on lines now, my boy. You first, you were right here on them jokes. Now you done crossed all over them jokes now. I'm like, bro, we didn't, we wasn't, I, I left the house like, bro, we wasn't even on that. Why is he talking about, we never even said nothing about school. What was the reason he said something to me about school? God said it doesn't matter, but call the university tomorrow and figure out what you got to do to get back in. And a year later, I was finished and had done my PhD and walked across. You got the wrong friends. You got folks that'll let you call the act. My friends don't let you call and talk crazy about your wife. My friends don't let you call and be like, oh, Didi, whack. I can't believe. Oh, Didi said that to you. Oh, Didi, whack. My friends be like, E, Ephesians 5, homie. 24, 25, go ahead. Let's read that together. And what does the Bible say? That, hey man, this is what Carl sent me this morning. Carl sent it this morning. Patient endurance is what you need now. I'm talking about somebody today right now. You about to forfeit the next level of your relationship. You about to be, listen to me very closely. My auntie asked me the other day, my, my aunt Gwen died, my grandma, my grandma Gwen died, and my auntie called me and was like, you good? I was like, I'm good, auntie. She said, no, for real. Are you good? I said, I'm great. He said, what you mean by that? I said, auntie, I experienced marital bliss. I said, auntie, I know what it's like to struggle in your marriage, but auntie, some kind of way I got from struggling in my marriage to marital bliss. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Let me read it one more time because you might have missed it. Because some of y'all are like, I want to be happily married, but you don't want to patiently endure. <laughs> I'm like, what you, what you think? You think bliss, everybody get that? You think everybody get bliss? You think everybody number one motivation be? You just think you don't go through nothing, you go straight to the top? He said, pay, pay, in, pay, 
patiently endure. Your problem is you don't know how to patiently endure. You want the reward that comes with being patient, but you ain't patient. Uh, You missed what I said. Okay, one more time. (laughs) Hebrews 10, 35. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. So what he's saying is, most of you can't do God's will because you're not patient. And if you can't do God's will, you can't get the reward. No, no will, no reward. Oh, come on. Lean not into thine own understanding. Meaning what? That I have my own understanding. It means that there are things I want to do my way. And when things don't go right, listen to me, everybody can do well when the sun, but baby, can you stay in the rain? Let me tell you what, you know what, when I say marital bliss, I don't even know what, like you might not be, I got to explain. I know Moose been telling me, E, you're a high, you know, flight attendant. You got to be more of an air traffic control. You have to explain yourself. You cannot assume that people understand what you're saying. You thought when I said marital bliss, I meant being on an island with my wife. That's what you thought I meant. You thought, you thought maybe the cars, the how, you thought that we're not arguing no more. No, 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 no. When I say marital bliss, I'm like, wow, God. Didi knows exactly who I am, all my stuff, and she still stayed with me. Wow. That's marital bliss. I already know there'd be people right now, if Didi died, that would hook up with me right now because they see the benefits. I'm actually sleeping with somebody that knows how dirty I am, how sinful I am, how messed up I am, and she's still with me. Hallelujah. I'm like, man, God, that's real love. (laughs) No, no, no. Please hear what I'm saying. I'm talking about all my defects, all my faults. And still love me? See, you like, I want to be happily married. But you can't stand the person's fault. You looking for somebody going to make you happy all the time. You miss what it was. Okay, one more time. I'm sorry. Patient endurance is what you need now. Right this second. You ain't got no patience, so you flip off at the mouth. You ain't got no patience, so you get angry and violent. You ain't got no patience. Oh, come on, somebody. Then, watch this, y'all. This is what I love about God. You should lack nothing. If you lack something, it is a lack of relationship. I'm going to say that again. Anything you lack, it's either you lack it, you don't have right relationship with God, you don't have right relationship with your mom. You don't have right relationship with your dad. You don't have right relationship with your kid. Do y'all understand that because I worked in the school system, do you understand that the way a child acts out when his daddy ain't in his life is different than how he acts when his mama's not in their life? Do you know they're dip, they're dip, Do you understand that they're not the same? When a child's father is not there, he acts out in one way. When a person's mom is not there, they act out in a, certain, a whole different way. We need relationships and we need right relationships. Not, we don't need fleshly relationships. We already flesh. Flesh don't need no more flesh. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, all right. Watch the last part. Here's the favorite part for me. He says, then you will receive all that God has promised. (laughs) Okay, here go the challenge. The challenge is all God's promise to give you is at the end. And most of you can't endure to get to the end. That's it. It's all at the end. Every blessing is at the end. But you you can't get to the end because you don't have the patience. All right. So I want to, I want to, let's go here real quick. Amen. For those of you who are watching, let's go here, get pen and pad. I I want to reverse engineer what God did for me so I can help God to do it for you. you. If you are married, you deserve to be. If you're in a relationship, you deserve to be happy. God did not put you on this earth for you just to go to work and pay somebody's bills. That's capitalism. As a matter of fact, if you live in a different part of the world, you wouldn't even be doing some of the stuff you're doing right now. Some of the stuff we're doing is based on capitalism. It has nothing to do with God. God did not bring you down here to work 50, 60 hours. He didn't do that. And then to retire when you're 70, 80 years old and get maybe 10 years, that's not what God, God brought you here. I pray, I pray that you prosper. And I pray that you prosper even as your soul prospers. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are royal priesthood. Oh, come on, somebody. 
And so we not, we got to start living that. And I'm going to show you why, I'm going to show you why God gave me something this morning. Like Eric, you got to share this with him because your bank account should be whatever you like. Whatever you think your bank account should be, that should, that's what it should be. I'm just being real. How many of y'all, how many of y'all think about your bank account? Let me just see your hand. You think about your bank account. Good, hands down. How many of y'all have a real number of what you should, like, liabilities, assets? How many of y'all have a number in your head of what, how many assets you should have? Let me see your hand. If you don't, I need you to start. Just think it. Why? He said... It is by your faith. Be it unto you. He said, you can move a mountain. How? Christ. He said, I don't got nothing to do with me. You were healed. You healed me. I I ain't heal you. What you mean you ain't heal me? I didn't heal you. Why did you touch me? I touched him, him too. He ain't do nothing. I touched him, him, him. He ain't do nothing. She came to church. She came to church. He came to church. Ain't nothing happened. Ah. Something happened when I came here. Something happened when I started praying. Something happened when I started reading the Bible. Something happened. You read the Bible, but nothing happened. You came to church, but nothing happened. Or you, something happened and it stopped happening. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody. Now, one group, you touched it, nothing happened. One group, you touched it, something happened and it stopped happening. Okay. So the Bible says when the unclean spirit had gone out of a person, this is crazy. It passed through waterless places seeking rest, but found none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. Praise God. Praise God. Pay attention. Pay attention. We, we, we all have these things about us that you can't degree out of your spirit. Some of them have been passed down from generation. Some of them you just made up on your own. We have, we have, the Bible says sin. We have these sins. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Meaning what? Not just dying like immediately, but the stuff that you do, like there are people I've read in the internet this week who were using drugs and end up overdosing on drugs. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? Like, that's some like, you know you ain't supposed to be using these drugs, but it's something in you that you can't stop. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I want to help somebody. I want to help somebody. You should, your relationship should be at the top. Everything should be at the top. You got to find the mutual boy. What's the mutual? The mutual means that the loving person that you are, the spiritual person you are attracted to that person, but the mess inside of you is what's going to keep y'all from being, that's going to make y'all separate. Okay, come on. It's the spirit in you that started the business. It's them quirky ways about you that's going to make you lose the business. It's the thing about you, the spiritual thing about you, that they hired you in the first place. It's that other stuff they about to fire you for. You know it exists, but you can't do nothing about it. The Bible says when the unclean spirits had gone out, meaning what? That you had a moment of freedom. You had a moment of liberty. You had a moment when you were free from those demons. This crazy right here. This crazy. Like she got whatever, delivered, they got delivered, all them spirits was gone. They went to find a place somewhere else and they couldn't find it. And guess what they said? We will return to our house. That's my house. I don't care what kind of degrees Aries got. That's my house. He got to control it. He, he left home early. He got a spirit of independence. I don't care how he preached. I don't care how much money he made. He has a spirit of independence. He has mistrust. So we're going to go there and if we can't find nobody, we're going back to Aries. Why? Because that's our house. I want to make sure you hear what I'm saying. I want you to hear what I'm saying. I want you to understand that there's some things about you that the enemy is saying, that's mine. I own him. I own her. And at any point, I can do this, this, and that, and I can make that person react. They're just going to flip off. All I, I just got to make this scenario. Boom. Make this. Some, listen to me. It's so crazy, y'all. I was talking to somebody this week, and I was just like, yo, do you have any evidence of what you're saying? You don't have no evidence of what you're talking about. Like, we just talked for the last hour. You gave me no evidence. But you held on strong to that belief. And you're about to allow that belief to disrupt a relationship when you have no evidence. But we are so sick that we don't need evidence. Our sickness is evidence enough. 
Your sickness and told you about somebody, something, uh, he, I heard, he didn't answer the phone. Just be real. How many of y'all on that? How many of y'all, just be honest. You call somebody, they don't call you back, and you just built a whole two day hookup. You just, and now they ain't your friend, and now they, you mad, and now they wrong, and now they out to get you, and now they hating on you, and now they ain't return your, now they, be honest. How many of y'all call somebody, they ain't call you back, and you made up some stuff in your head about why they ain't call you back? Just be honest. I see you. Yeah, I see y'all. Yeah, I know you. I know you out there. It ain't all y'all, but I know we, some of us, it is. I'm just saying, that's your sickness. You done made up something. They didn't answer the phone, so you didn't came up with a hole. They didn't make your event, so you didn't came up with a hole because they didn't come to your event. And because they didn't come to your event, you came to their event, you support them, they don't support you. They ain't, uh, and then somebody picked up the phone and called you. I saw your homegirl didn't come to the event. <laughs> The devil was like, yep, she didn't go to the event. All I got to do is have homegirl call homegirl and tell her she didn't come to the event. And then she didn't come to the event, so now she's going to be mad. And the one that called you don't even have the relationship as the one that didn't show up to your event. And now you let somebody that only got a relationship with you destroy a relationship you have. Sick. And we want, like, we just going to come to church and that's going to change it. No, you can come to church as much as you want. You can read your Bible as much as you want. But as long as the spirits say... I will return. The spirit is saying, I care nothing about your little communion. Have communion if you will. But I will return. Come on. I don't care how long you've been off drugs. I will return. I don't care how long you've been out of relationships. You're going to get in another one. And as soon as you get in another one, we're going to return. And the same drama that happened in the last one going to happen to this one. And I will return to my house. Here's the part, though, Candace. This part blew my mind. Watch this, Candace. It said, and when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. <laughs> you done went to AA. <laughs> you done went to AA. You done got your stuff straight. You, you good. Now, the house is empty. Amen. The house is swept. Amen. That joker put in order. Amen. You done went to therapy. It's put in order. Your stuff clean. <laughs> yeah, but they say, okay, then, okay, it's clean, praise God. <laughs> it's clean, praise God, it's clean now. And then it comes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself. So now you really off the chain now. You didn't clean, and now you back to the... It brings, and it brings with it. That's why I told y'all, be careful who you run with because it's first one negative person and then before you know it, that negative person then call other people over. Now they over at the crib talking negative and now one, two negative people turn into five negative people. Then they call their little homies over and then they come over and now you got 10 people evil than the first one that called you to come over. I'm not mad at you. I could go over and be evil too. I left the crib when I was 16. Evil. And the devil was like, bruh, bruh, they trying to punish you at 16, bruh. You should be able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. Nobody got the right just because they paying bills. They ain't got the right to tell you what to do. Just because they buying groceries. You eat them up if you want to. You can't tell me how much groceries to eat. It's my house. <laughs> I'm telling you, the evil spirit will get jump on you with some dumb stuff. You trying to sp you trying to punish somebody? What? I'm grown. I'm an adult. What? A broke adult, no vision adult, purpose adult, a child faking it like he grown. Why? Because other people told me we don't get whippings. I'm like, oh y'all don't get whippings? No, we don't get whippings. Bro, they don't whip nobody out here. Your mama still whipping you? I'm like, no. No, she ain't. No, she ain't still whipping me. What? Oh, uh, bro, you soft. Your daddy's still punishing you? You still get, they taking stuff from you? Bro, ain't nobody took nothing from us since we were sick. What kind of family you come from? I don't know, but we don't, I don't get no punishments. So then I mess up, my parents come in, we about to punish you. I'm like, no, you not. My homie said, my homie said, <laughs> my homie ain't fed me once. 
My home, I'm telling y'all, you better be careful. You talking to people that's trying to lure you away from the very blessing that God has given you. And you dumb enough to listen to them. God has blessed you with that job. God has blessed you with that relationship. God has blessed you. Now you got somebody who ain't even blessed telling you to stop being blessed and come over here with us unblessed folk. <laughs> and you like, I shall come. Abuse me. <laughs> Take from me. Destroy me. I shall come. Oh, bro, you don't, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I done woke up in an abandoned building listening to these clowns. I done woke up with nothing to eat. I done left for God. I'm trying to put the heat on in the, air, in the abandoned building. I'm trying to turn the heat up. <laughs> I'm trying to turn the heat up. I'm like, homie, you didn't tell me there wasn't going to be no heat when I listened to you. You never said I wouldn't be eating. I was like 135 pounds soaking wet. You better be careful who you're in relationship with. It will determine the rest of your life. So they didn't brought seven boys back, more evil than the first one, more evil than itself. And they entered and dwelled. <laughs> they entered and dwelled there. You wasn't even on that. Now you own it and you can't even free yourself from it now. I didn't woke up four weeks later realizing homeless ain't the deal. <laughs> I don't get it twisted, y'all. I'm about three weeks in. I was like, nah, this ain't it. This ain't it right here. I got, I've, I've been run amok. I've been led astray. <laughs> Plymouth Rock didn't, I, it fell on me. Homelessness fell on me. But guess what? I had gotten so evil from listening to those people that even though I knew I was in trouble, I had too much pride to say I was wrong. So that ego had me, that ego is like, bro, what, what? Yeah, you're wrong, but you're going to go back and humble yourself? <laughs> Bruh, you really going to look weak then. You thought you was weak when you left. That humility, boy, that ain't going to, I'm telling you, that ain't going to cut it. Don't you ever go back and tell nobody you sorry. bro? you a grown man. Uh, even if you sorry, you ain't sorry. No, come on, don't play. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Don't play. Even, raise your hand. Even if you sorry, you ain't sorry. That joker then got back. He done brought seven with him. Now they all inside of me. Now I'm worse than I was. Now they entered me. They dwelling with me. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. I'm in the worst situation I was when I was being disobedient and disrespectful. I'm just saying when I was disrespectful and disobedient, at least I'd go take the whipping. I ain't want it, but I'd be like, man, let me go and get this whipping and go and get this over with. Now I got so much pride and the evil is so much inside of me that I know I'm in a bad space. I know my life could be taken out in these streets in Detroit. I'm only 16 years old, homeless. I know they watching me when I go in the bed in Billing, Ohio. I see them watching me when I come. I see the dope boy. They watch me go in and out. I ain't got no protection. I know they watching me. I see them when I come and go. I left stuff there. They stole it. I knew it was stolen, but I was in such a bad place spiritually that even though I was in the most danger I'd ever been in my life, I couldn't break it. I couldn't stop. I couldn't let it go. Some of you have gone so far. You can't come back now. You better repent while you can. You know it's wrong. You better stop. You better stop, Samson, for they put, poke your little eyes out. And so also will it be with this evil generation. Three things, real quick, three things. Do me a favor. So I want you to keep, I want you to clean it and keep it clean. Sounds so much like my wife. I, said, I just heard Didi. I just, the whole spirit just dropped all on me. Clean, but keep it clean. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't tell you how many arguments we didn't got to about clean and I didn't keep it clean. I just cleaned the basement yet two days ago. About my third time cleaning it after I clean, cleaned it. Oh, y'all not hearing me. 
I just keep going back. She said, listen to me. You cleaned it, but it's going to get dirty again because you keep doing what you, you keep taking your clothes and putting them downstairs. You keep going in the shower and changing and just leaving stuff right there. Like whatever you touch, put away. But it's something about my evil spirit of cleanliness that just don't, it won't just let me just put it away immediately. It just won't, it just let me take it off and then just bounce. I don't know what it is. I just take off my clothes and just like, I'm out. I just wash, I just eat dishes. I just eat with dishes and just sit them right there. I just, it pulls me like, leave them here. Leave them here. Do not clean them. I don't know what it is. About four days of dishes just piling up and she getting upset. What's wrong with you? Watch. I said, but I cleaned on Monday. It's Thursday and I can't tell you cleaned on Monday. Come on, y'all not hear me. And look, this is so funny. I cleaned up, y'all. That joker was fire. But I had one little, spot, uh, one little thing of clothes that I was going to throw away, another one I was going to wash, and a couple of shoes I needed to put in the trash. And I, I, I cleaned up like maybe on a Tuesday morning at 4 a.m. No, three, yeah, about four, four, three to four. I cleaned up in the morning. I was geek. I was in the spirit praying. And then Friday, I think it was, I walked past the stairwell and I saw the stuff still piled up there. We worship periods or points in life rather than our purpose in life. So what do I mean by that? Some of y'all, your last meaningful hookup was when you graduated from college. You hadn't, had, you hadn't had that type of experience since you graduated from college. That was a major event. Everybody celebrated you, but that was about as high as you've been since you graduated. Or you got a job, and when you got that job, you was pumped up, and you were so grateful for that job. But since that job, you've not really had any high moments like that. Amen. Praise God. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. What happens is when you start focusing on periods or points rather than your purpose, you get one is stagnant and one is steady flow. Yep. I want to help somebody. Yep. Ah, praise God. Praise God. Some of y'all, you got married and your honeymoon and your, and your wedding and your first year has been the best you've ever had. You in your fifth year and it don't look nothing like your first one. I'm going to say that one more time. The honeymoon, let me tell you something. If you could have captured that honeymoon and kept that, ooh. Ooh, remember that dating period where it was just, ooh. Remember that first, I don't want to say year. Just be careful. I don't know. All of us are different. <laughs> Maybe the first six weeks, I don't know, six months. <sighs> remember, remember when you got that degree, how you felt? Shh, listen to me very closely, please. God told me to tell you today that when you get caught in events and in moments, you worship that, and then you end up stagnant. You end up staying there, and then four years later, five years later, six years later, you wake up, and you are, you are not, you, like, what great, great June 2020 is not great June 2022. Come on, I got, I'm about to get out of here. I want to help somebody. I need to help. I need to help you. I need to help you. Let's go to the next one. I want to show you something. A, an event, a thing that happens, especially one of importance. Hey, man. Oh, come on, praise God. So this is what God showed me. God said, Eric, this is what I need you to do for me. You remember the greatest moment in your, like, you remember DD? You remember, like, when y'all was on a high, high? Y'all was like, yeah, God, I remember that. He said, okay, good. You remember how you felt? I was like, yeah, God, how I felt. He said, how do you like that feeling? I said, I love that feeling. He said, you want to have that feeling practically every day? I was like, yeah, God, I want to have that feeling practically every day. He said, okay, here's why you don't have it. You don't, you, I, I remember being in my marriage, and I remember being like, yo, I love DD to life. Like, I remember being in my marriage like, yo, I, I don't want to be with nobody else, so I wouldn't, I could be with somebody else. But why am I just here, and why is it just like... Why is it like you going to work, I'm going to work, we coming back, and we married, we sleeping in the same bed, but we like glorified roommates in terms of our feelings for each other. I'm like, God, what? And he said, here's what happened. When, when you was dating, there was a certain energy that you was putting on, and it was a steady flow. It was every day. Oh, when you, the honeymoon, there was an energy at the honeymoon. And our honeymoon was like, uh, we, we broke down in Kentucky. Oh, y'all not hearing me. The car broke down in Kentucky and we still had a honeymoon. You missed what I just said. So you think that it's problem free. It don't have nothing to do with problem free. It has everything to do with where your spirits is in the problem. And then God said, do me a favor. Don't look at when y'all weren't. Go back to the time that you felt was the highest. All right, you got that? I was like, yep. He was like, what did you do? I wrote it down. Do that every day. <laughs> he said, do it every day. 
I said, all right, God, I got it. What you want me to do? He said, number one, you can't stay at home every day all day because when y'all was dating, you wouldn't stay at home every day all day. When y'all, was, when y'all first got married, y'all wasn't at home every day. He said, first thing I need you for me is y'all got to take some trips. I said, all right, God, how long? As long as you possibly can. I said, okay, why? Because when Dee Dee has to wake up and see a dirty house, it throw her whole mood off. Take her to a hotel for at least three, four days. They cleaning up. You ain't, she ain't got to cook. I was like, got it. All right, but here's a trick. You can't have Dee Dee in the hotel too long because Dee Dee a workhorse. If she ain't moving toilets like her mom, some of y'all like, I said, you heard what I said, toilets. Toilet, sinks, whole drywall. Like if she ain't doing drywall, she ain't happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, you know what I'm saying? We was in California for about three months because, you know, COVID, we couldn't move around. And I saw her, she was like a fiend. I was like, what's wrong? She was like, I'm, I, I can't stand California. I was like, it's not California. Let's go to Home Depot. Now, I'm just being real. Some of y'all, you, your girl want to go to the mall. Didi like, like, I take Didi to the mall just to walk around. If I really want Didi to be happy, Lowe's. I'm talking about we in Lowe's. I'm talk, I'm, she loving it. I'm sitting there like, unbelievable, God. And what have I gotten myself into that a romantic evening is Lowe's aisle five? I'm not playing. I brought her mom. I'm like, you know, Didi, we in Cali. She, you know, she a family person. You know what I'm saying? Like, she can't really be out here because she ain't with her cousins or mom. So I'm going to bring her mom. Her mom stayed for about four days. She's like, I can't do it. I was like, what's wrong? It wasn't enough. She had done the weeds. Like, I'm telling you, look, y'all. I'm talking about she, her mom had on her whole work hookup. She had put some plastic stuff around her shoes. That We got a hill in the backyard. You ain't even spoke. Scientifically, you can't climb that joker. Like, <laughs> symmetrically, I promise you, there's no way to walk on that joker. I'm talking about weeds everywhere. She getting up every day like, we shall. Go. She out there. I'm like, Ma, we ain't got to do that no more. <laughs> And she like, it's all good. I was like, I could call somebody. I could pay somebody to do that. She out there, the hat on. She out there. And guess what? Hour later, Didi out, right after worship, Didi out there with her. And I'm talking about thousands upon thousands of weeds. Mom leaves in three days. All them jokers gone. And now she like, I got to go. I'm like, let's rest. I can't. I got to get back to Detroit. I got two million houses I got to fix. I'm like, at this age, you still, what in the world? Hallelujah. Listen to me very closely. But when we go to Home Depot at least two, three times a week, marriage on blast. I don't particularly care for Home Depot. If I could just keep it real before Didi keep it real, I'm 50-50. 50% I drop her off and just stay in the car and chill. 50% of the time I go in and walk around and try to pretend like I'm enjoying the experience. She like, just go. I was like, why? I can tell you don't want to be here. I'm like, I do want to be here. <laughs> no, you don't. I can tell. How can you tell? I'm smiling. Good. Let's go to the last scripture. We're going to get y'all out of here. Last scripture. We're going to get y'all out of here. And the Bible says steady flow, steady flow, steady flow. If you go into church and you love in church, steady flow. Don't you take no break. Steady flow. If your man loves to eat and you cook and he love to eat, steady flow. Keep cooking. Oh, hear what I'm saying. And don't you let nobody. Are oh, you still? It's 2022. You still cooking for your man. You got to get people out your ear. That's your man. If your man like you cooking and that's y'all thing, cook, baby girl, cook on. I'm just saying, whatever he, you do, he do for you that you like, you ain't got to act. Listen to me. This society would be so much further along the road, less travel, if you stop worrying about what other people think about what works for you. Bro, you too, I, bro, you too passionate for me. Then don't watch me on YouTube. Why are you watching and then put a negative comment? Go somewhere. You just too loud. Go to the person that whispers. <laughs> Come out of my life. You don't like it. You don't have to be here. Like, why are you tormenting yourself? You don't like me. Go away. Your whole life messed up because you, you got something that's working for you. And the people you love don't think it's the best. Look, let me tell you something. If you're going to fail, fail. That's the one thing I could say. I, me and my son used to get into it back in the day. He'd be like, Dad, I can't stand that. I can't stand you. I can't stand. I'm like, didn't go. He's like, you asking me to go? I was like, yo, bro, I really didn't like it. And I left. I really didn't want to be at the crib, but I left. 
And I really lived in abandoned buildings because I had a spirit of independence and I, I paid the price to have my life my way. Was it the best decision? Probably not. But I had my, I did it my way. And I learned at 16 years old, by the help of my parents, I learned how to be independent. Didn't say I made the best decisions in my life, but I was so independent, and they was mine, and they wasn't nobody else. Let me tell you something. If you're going to go out like a sucker, go out like a sucker on your own. Don't let somebody else take you out like a sucker. If you're going to go out like a sucker, may it be your sucker decisions. <laughs> Not somebody else convince you to do that dumb stuff. I'm just saying, all my young people, if you want to do something dumb, do it. But don't let nobody convince you to do something stupid that you don't even like, but you just want to be valued by them. Tell my kids all the time, like, yo, I ain't into smoking and drinking. If you want to do that, do it. But make sure you want to do it, not the circle of influence you with are saying that if you want to hang with us, then you got to smoke and drink. That's not the truth. I hung with, I hung with some show enough. <laughs> show enough. They was lacing their weed with stuff. They were selling dope to their own parents. I'm just being real. My boys was like, they're going to get it from somewhere. Well, D, you know what I'm talking about? I never did it. Why? Because I didn't want to, and I still was with the crew. Because people like people who stand up for what they believe. They really don't like pushovers. They just abuse pushovers. So my last text, make sure you get it. Shh. Okay, let's just go here. Right, make sure you write this down, put it in your phone, or remember it. You're going to go steady. You're going to go consistent. You're going to go stable. And then you're going to be predictable. This is how you blow up. This is how you stay with marital bliss. This is how you keep making money. We, we got a new book coming out. We, we just got stuff. We got conference. We're taking a conference level. How do we do it? We started with the first one we did. We started with the advantage. We started with uh, advising. We, we left Bethel. We started with APOC. And, and, and it, do, are you the best? You don't have to be, look at the room. You ain't got to be, oh, come on. I'm not trying to be funny, y'all, but, but 90% of people who we started with ain't here, and it's still packed. No, I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't got to worry about, my wife used to tell me all this all the time, because I used to get emotional. I ain't see this person. I ain't see that person. She said, you too, you too emotional. You got to get off the emotional tip. You, you, this is a business. Whether you want to see church as a business or not, it's lights. It's electricity. you got to pay folk. This is a business. Do me a favor, husband. Do me a favor. I said, what? She said, start seeing yourself like a bus. I said, a bus? She said, yeah, yeah. You know, like the Detroit public transportation. I was like, how am I like a bus? She said, do me a favor. Get in the bus and drive it. Go to each stop. Get, find your route. Do your route. Make sure you're on time for your route. Don't sit at the bus station waiting for Sister Sarah to come because she come most of the time. You can't wait for Sister Sarah. Either Sister Sarah is there when she's supposed to be there or she's not. You got to get to the next stop. You don't worry about who get on the bus and get off the bus. You the bus. Just make sure the bus starts, the bus goes, and the bus is where it's supposed to be, when it's supposed to be there, and everything else will take care of itself. Your job is to be steady, consistent, stable, and predictable. Saturday at 11 o'clock, I told Jamie, bro, I don't care. I don't care who's saying, I don't care who pre, I don't care. 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Let that computer go on. I don't care if we sing it, it's a countdown. I don't care. The next level to life is being predictable, not being all over the place. The Bible says like a, like a sea, a waves in the sea, tossed and driven, an unstable man, a man who is divided is unstable in all his ways. A man who two-faced it is unstable in all his ways. A woman who's two-faced it is unstable in all their ways. I'm telling you, I got people that's leaving my life. Why? Because I'm making them make a decision. Before, they never had to make a decision and they never made one. Now you got to make a decision. You ain't going to just be sitting around no more. You make a decision. Why? Because when we're playing games, we'll never get... You ever notice when you play games with people and ain't like three years later, they stop playing games? 
It ain't like five years from now, people just wake up like, hey, I'm stopping playing games. I used to be the dude to give people three, four chances because God gave me so many. He said, no, son, I didn't give you chances. What I gave you was grace, and you made the adjustments. He went from a GED to a four-year degree, from a four-year to a master, from a master to a PhD. You made adjustments. They just run in their mouth. That ain't grace. You think, you think because I looked out for you, son, you think, no, 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 it's a difference. You don't see it. Yes, I showed you grace, but that individual, I showed them grace, but they didn't do nothing with the grace, so I'm not showing more grace. I just don't pass out my grace. It's grace adjustment, grace adjustment, grace adjustment, grace adjustment. You just want grace and no adjustments. You got to make the adjustment, boo. I had to make the adjustment as a son. I ain't always had the same relationship with my parents. I had to make an adjustment as a father. I had to make an adjustment as a husband. I had to make an adjustment as a businessman. I ain't get here because of no. I hate when people say, you gifted. The devil is a lot. Don't disrespect me and my relationship with God. This ain't no gift. We all got a gift. This is adjustment. This is sacrifice. This is growing up. This is putting away childish stuff. This ain't no doggone gift. Don't disrespect me like that. Then that just means everybody with a gift would be where I am. Don't disrespect me like that. This is an adjustment. This is my wife saying I can't take the arguing no more. Fix it. This is my daughter saying, Dad, I can't take the uh, sporadic, emotional coming at me. I can't, I can't handle it. Fix it. <laughs> oh, y'all not hearing me. God bless me. He said, I did. I gave you grace. You ain't do nothing with it. Final one, final one. Say, say it with me. Steady. Come on, steady. Consistent. Stable. Predictable. Huh? Come on. Steady. Consistent. Stable. Predicted. Come on, predictable. Come on, come on. All right, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. And the Bible says, and when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And he became the father of Methuselah. Enoch walked faithfully with God for 300 years. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you. So whatever he was doing from zero to 65, it wasn't walking and talking with God. And you didn't even know who he was. But something happened when he had his son, Methuselah. Something happened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, if you ever had kids, you know what happened. No, I'm just being real. See, when I met C, C was a little bigger. When he had his son, Trey, he was like, E, I'm about to lose weight because I'm going to be my, and he ain't gained it back. No, no, I, I want to make it practical. And Enoch had a son, and when he had the son, boom, something shifted in his life. And from that day forward, the Bible says, Enoch walked faithfully, consistent. Your problem is you start prayer and you stop prayer. Your problem is you start fast. Somebody said, E.T., you don't fast? I said, no, I don't fast. They say, bro, I fast, he fast, she fast. I said, yeah, you got to fast because you're not consistent. You got to fast every week because you're, you're not consistent. Somebody like, oh, what does that mean? Let me tell you what it means. I don't have to buy my wife a bunch of gifts because I'm with her regularly and I shower her regularly. So we don't got to do the, the Big Bang stuff. <laughs> we do the Little Big Bang Theory. I'm just being, we do the Little Big Bang Theory. I ain't got to do Hey, E, it's the holiday. It's your wife's birthday. You didn't cash her out. Surely I did. A lot of people, E, don't celebrate birthdays. Nope, but you can't lie and say I don't celebrate you. You can't lie and say I might not see something that I think you like and I cash you out. Or you can't say we don't cash app you. No, I don't do it on your birthday because I don't need to wait for your birthday to do what God tells me to do at that particular moment. I don't need to do a bunch of fasting because I walk and talk with God daily. Some of y'all need to fast because you need like you need something special. Like you like God, I got an emergency. I'm about to stop eating. <laughs> I have a relationship with God, so I talk to him every day. So in our conversation, I'm just like, yo, God, so-and-so need a job. Can you, the church is having a, can you, we need more money. Can you, Shh, listen to what I'm saying. You got to listen to this. Enoch walked faithfully, which means what? He was consistent and he never broke it. It didn't say he walked off and on for 300 years. <laughs> 
I'm leaving you. Let's go. Some of you will wonder what's wrong in my life. Yes, you do it. You've done one thing that's phenomenal, but once you did it, you celebrated it and you quit doing it. I want you to start whatever you do that your mama love, your daddy love, your family love, your best friends love. When you see they love it, keep doing it consistently. You do something in your personal life and you see what it does for you, keep doing it. Your problem is you go into the job and you giving them the best of you for six months, then you flip on them. And they like, hold up, I don't know her. We didn't hire her. She didn't act like that when she was interviewing. She didn't act like that when she needed the job. All of a sudden, she got some money now. She acting different. We're saying, listen to me, don't be mad at them. You can't be mad at your boss. You can't be mad at your spouse. You can't be mad at your kids. I realized the reason why Jada was tripping when I did it is because she didn't know that Eric. She didn't see that. She didn't see her father acting like that. So, so it might have only been once or twice in her life. But when I did it, it was like she was like, whoa, who is that? Ah, y'all miss what I said. Your, your problem is the great you is not consistent. The good you is really not consistent. That evil you is the one that's got the most power and juice. And now you didn't got to a point where you so evil now that it's messing you up. It's messing up your money now because you won't change. It's messing up your marriage. She love you. She love you from the beginning. She still love you. It's just hard. Can I be honest? Get, 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 yeah, get, get ready. Get, get ready. Can I be honest? It's not that people don't love us. But when you start doing dumb stuff, it's just like, how much can I take? I gave you a year on that dumb stuff. What am I supposed to take, five years of that? Because you know what I noticed about humans? And Didi used to get on me about this all the time. Didi was like, it's not that I want to get on you, Eric. It's not. It's not that I want to be this evil, mean person. But I just noticed that when I let you ride on some stuff, it just become a habit. So the reason why I stay on you and I push you because I know you got greater, but just on your own, you ain't going to do it. So I don't cut you no slack because I've not seen the correlation of cutting slack and you growing and getting better. She like, you think I want people to think that I'm the mean one? You think I want to come to church and people think I'm mean? No, I don't. I just noticed that when you nice to people when they ain't doing what they're supposed to do, they never seem to turn around. So let's not waste time. Let me just tell you what the truth is right now. Let me give it to you as it is. Let's not beat around the bush. So right now, you're, you're saying, God, man, I've been, my husband, why, I've been putting it on air. I've been, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, nope. you know that the problem has been there is a good person inside of you. It's just not consistent. There is a great person in you. It's just not consistent. You're standing right now. That's you. You're standing right now, and you're like, God, I need to, I need to go ahead and clip. I need to, and Enoch walked faithfully with God for 300 years and had sons and daughters. Although Enoch lived 365 years, Enoch walked faithfully with God, and then he was no more. What? He was what? He, he was no more. Why? Because God took him away. Why did God take him away? 300 years of predictability. God said, I've been watching you for 300 years, son. I think you could come to heaven and not mess it up. No, no, God can't bring some of us there because you might be good for about a year or two, then you're going to come up there and tear it up. You're going to come, I'm just being real. You know how you are. You get in a relationship, you good for a while, then you acting a plum fool. God said, I can't bring y'all up here. Y'all might be cool for six months, but then you're going to bring that set, that demon, and then you're going to bring seven more. We ain't having that. I'm going to give you a job, give you money. You're going to save for a couple weeks, then you're going to be back to spending crazy. I'm going to get you off drugs, and five months later, you're going to be back on drugs. Enoch was so consistent. Enoch was so steady. He was so stable. He was so consistent. He was so predictable that for 300 years, God said, I can count on him to act the same way on earth as it is in heaven. Bring that boy up here. We are not predictable enough for God. Yeah, you pray when something go wrong. You ever notice you prayed that hard when something was wrong and then two years later it ain't wrong no more and you ain't praying that hard no more? What happened to your prayers? Somebody's coming, he's saying, I, 
I've lost complete control. I'm never going to get to predictable. You're coming right now before God. You want to pray. God, I can't, I ain't even got control of myself no more. I don't have control of my behavior. I don't got control of my mouth. I don't got control of my mind. I have simply lost, the evil has gotten so deep that I just have spurts, outbursts. I don't have no control. Don't play games. If that's you, you're coming right now. God's ready to free you up right now. We're not here to play games. I ain't grew up in church. I ain't playing church. Get your, get your breakthrough right now. Get your breakthrough right now. You're tired of playing games with God. You want to be predictable. You can't even trust yourself. I'm talking to you. This ain't got nothing to do with no church. You know that you can't trust yourself. Now it's time. Let's go. Let's not play games. Let's go. If you can kneel, kneel. Say, God, I'm tired. Whatever you're tired of doing to you, I want you to tell God that and then ask for freedom. I already know what mine was. I'll keep it 1,000. I wasn't the greatest son. I keep it 100. I wasn't the best father. I wasn't the best husband. I've never been the best pastor or businessman. I just keep it, I keep it 1,000 with God. Here's where I'm messed up. If I, I don't want to make you look bad. Here's your, God, here go your opportunity to help me. That's what we're saying today. God, I can't help myself. Here go your opportunity to help me. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of going from one relationship to the next. I'm tired of not experiencing bliss in my business, bliss in my own part. I'm telling, telling myself we're going to lose weight and I don't. I'm tired. I can't even control me. We ain't talking about your enemy right now. You can't even control your own self. You're coming right now for you're coming right now. Come on. Come on, come on. God is in the, God is in the business. Come on, of healing. You never have to take that thing back outside if you don't want to. You, you are, you are in the presence of the Almighty, Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh, Elohim, El Shaddai. You are in the presence of the Most High, the creator of all things. There's no problem he can't fix. You didn't ask for some of the stuff that happened to you, but it did. Now you need to ask for the healing. You're coming right now. I'm tired of myself. I'm about to mess up my marriage. Shoot, I'm about to mess up my business. I'm messing up my life. Three, God's calling you. Come quick. Come, 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 come. This is your shot. Do not play. I want to be like Enoch. I want to be consistent, God. I want to be stable. I'm tired of being all over the place, God. I want to be steady. I want to be predictable, Father, meaning that I I can predict, I I can call out in advance what's going to happen. I know myself so well. (laughs) Help. Two, quickly, quickly, come, 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 come. God is asking you. God is asking you to come. He's giving you the opportunity. He says, not only am I able, not only am I able, I'm capable of blessing you. I'm willing to bless you, but you got to come and confess That's the adjustment you got to make. You got to let that pride go that had me homeless. Let that pride go. You got to let that pride go. You got to let that ego go. You're trying to prove to everybody. You got to let that ego go. You're trying to show you strong. No, 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 no. In my weakness is Christ made strong. Not in my strength. In my weakness. Not in my gift. In my weakness is Christ made strong. Come be weak before your daddy right now. Come be weak. You've never been weak in your entire life. And that's your problem. You've never been weak. You've never submitted. You've never surrendered. Let go. And let God. You've tried to handle your life. You've done a terrible job. Just admit it. You out of control. Admit it. Tell daddy. Help. Help. How did I get here? Help. Why did I do that? Help. Heal me. Fix it. Make it right, Jesus. I've screwed it up. I've messed it up. And I don't want to live like this no more. And I don't want this to be my reality no more. Help. 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 Father, I come now because you said if we would confess our sins. You said it. You said it. If we would confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. You said it. We stand here today. 
Can an Ethiopian change his skin? Can a leopard change his spots? Then how can he who was born in sin cleanse himself? We cannot. Help, Jesus. Help. We need you. Our normal is not right, and we know it. We've justified it, but our normal isn't right. And we want what you want for us. And so bless your babies right now, Lord. This is not, this is only confession. This is not fixing. We can't fix it. We've confessed to you. You said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves. Don't you see their posture, God? Can you read their hearts? They have humbled themselves. You said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, if they would seek my face, they're up here, God. They didn't stay in their seats. They came. They're seeking you. Help them, Jesus. Do what you said you would do. Fix it for them, Lord. They cannot fix it for themselves. They've driven from New York, Lord. They've driven from Philly. They've driven from D.C. They've come from all over the world, South Carolina, North Carolina. They stand at your feet. Help, help Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus for Jesus alone. No money, no degree. Nothing can save us. What shall make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of of Jesus. Jesus come and do your work. El Shaddai show up and show out. Satan we rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that not only would you leave this clean spot but never come back again. Never come back again. You are not welcomed. Leave. Leave and never come back. We love you. Oh, how we love you. We praise you. Oh, how we lift up your name. We glorify you, Lord. Oh, how we love you. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Cleanse us. Renew us. Give us a new reality. Give us a new life. And when we leave this place, May we never leave your presence. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. If only for a moment, may we find ourselves in your presence, Lord. If only a scripture or two, if only a devotion, oh Lord, if, if only a walk and talk with Jesus like Enoch. But may we be, may this relationship, may there never be another breach, another gap. In this relationship, may this relationship from today and forevermore be intact. Let the believers, those who believe that there's still power, wonder-working power, in the hem of his garment, say with me, amen, amen, amen. Come on, it's okay. Give the, however you do it, give the Lord some praise. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know where my deacons, deaconess, if I can get all names, please, all names. We want to stay in touch. I, won't, I don't want them going back to their seats and we're not making sure that we, we call. We, do, we got to do something. So please, if we can get where, where our deacons, deaconess, if we can quickly, amen, get a piece of paper. Before you leave, if you came up, make sure you sign that document for me. Name, number, email, please. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Come on. God is good. Amen. Come on. God is good. Amen. It's all right. It's family reunion. We're not in a rush today. It's, it's a special day. Amen. We're not in a rush today. Amen. We ain't going nowhere today. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. For those of you who are watching online, please support this ministry. However, it's not my job to harass you. Amen. But, but if you are a believer and returning a faithful tithe, praise God, we could, we could des desperately use it for the work that we're doing. Praise God. We thank you for joining. Amen. For those of you who are watching prayerfully, our next family reunion. Amen. We want to see you wherever we are. We want to see you. Come on. Is that all right? Clap for the clap. If you, if you, if you travel to get here, stand so they can see you. If you travel to get here, you need to be here next year. 
Come on, look at him. You, come on. Turn to the camera, y'all, and wave. That camera right there. Turn around and wave to the camera, y'all. It's right there. Turn around right there. Everybody turn around behind you, behind you, right there. Just wave. Just wave at everybody that's watching. Thank y'all. But next year this time, you need to be in the building. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent. I'm sorry. One for another. Before you leave, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Do me a huge favor. I need your prayer. I need your prayer. You're watching. I need your prayer. I have multiple friends who have recently sold books. My boy Sean Stevens called me and was like, E, this happened and that happened and we didn't make the New York Times bestseller list. This person didn't make it. This person didn't make it. E, you got to do this. You got to do this. Do me a favor. When we made our phone call, nobody could give us an algorithm for how to make it happen. But I know an algorithm that can make it happen. Amen. I know one that can make it happen. And that's your prayers. Amen. That's your prayer. Come on, put your hand toward it for me. Can you just, can you just pray right now? Just ask God to just show up and show up. And I promise you, because there's no algorithm, when we make it because of your prayers, we're going to give God the praise and say it was God that did it. Is that all right? When they ask, how did it happen? We won't say individual sales. We won't say book, uh, bulk sales. We won't say Amazon. We won't say Barnes and Nobles. We won't say TJ Maxx. We won't say target. We will say it was God. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you so much. Hey there. Welcome to my channel. Fresh personal growth motivation. Today I speak. Keep it clean. 2024. In a relationship where about sometimes we go out and we was in Dubai. I know ordering a pipe, hey man, hey oh I am like how much is that? It was 250 about their folks had other folks that ordered having a great gonna pick up will she says said by who? they came and paid hours before she even hearing what i am saying i am telling and relationship and uh, that's your fault and relationships you made a choice to be complain and cry all day choice or talking to somebody online person it choice choose to connect accountable for doing what not hearing me hey man i saw recently you know media it was a couple you know relationships where it was domestic was not tripping i was not like judging nobody man bro you made the war wrong chick you married somebody that let you 